Thanks. So uh, I think we have got a brief introduction. So I'll just introduce. So HFOS is a National Science Foundation grant uh, funded at the project that is it's uh, origin started between Trinity College, basically University of Trinity College, and uh, as Murthy mentioned, uh, RPI joined this as well, their chapter. And we got about another dozen collaborators. Uh, the goal of the grant that we got was to engage undergraduate students in building social beneficial software. We wanted to ask if that would be attracting students to revitalize undergraduate computing. Uh, since the inception of the project, we've had students work on, like I mentioned, uh, Samana uh, Source Project. We've worked with uh, the Samana and IBM doing a Chinese earthquake, uh, Chengdu earthquake response. Uh, we've had teams develop software applications for BOAC, uh, voluntary organizations active in disaster in New York City, for a uh, disaster coordination tool that was then used by the Salvation Army to coordinate uh, mass feeding in the city for 10,000 people. And, and most recently, last summer, the Red Cross used it to coordinate an exercise there. That project actually spun off now, and the students that worked on it have started a startup around it. was trying to build it up. So the project that we talk about today was our experience with uh, the project we just did a mobile application for to be used to help with the food risk, uh, uh, food distribution program in Haiti. Uh, we developed this mobile app, took it down to Haiti this past summer, uh, field tech trialed it, and they're in the process of rolling it out now. So I'll start off with a little introductory video that was uh, prepared by our communications guys. Okay, so that was just a brief intro video that we put out. The, uh, the project started uh, back in November 2010. We were approached by uh, ACDI Moka to develop a, a mobile application that we could use to replace a paper based system that they had. They have a database in their office, a uh, Microsoft database that they manage, and uh, all the uh, and beneficiaries for this distribution program come in to get. Uh, food rations. So I should add that the program is goes for uh, expected mothers and infants and children under Malnourished children under five uh, in rural parts of Haiti. So they have about 10,000 registered beneficiaries for their food program. Another 7,000 that they help with uh, agricultural assistance. The uh, so the goal of the tool is to replace this paper-based system that they're using now, which runs, as you saw in the video, that they have delays in getting those information back. So they have a monthly cycle for feedings, and they need to get the information out from the field back to the office uh, quicker. I think the worst case they mentioned, it took three months for someone to get registered in the system. Uh, but usually it takes a couple of weeks to get someone new in the system or keep tracking them. 
So we had this tool that was built uh, previously by uh, students. Uh, they built up, it's called POSIT. You know, it's a fun acronym that, that stands for Portable Open Search Notification Tool. We developed this as a sort of, as the name implies, uh, a application that you can use to catalog finds out in the field. So you know, if you're a first if you're a responder during a crisis, you can use that to catalog damaged buildings. Or if you're a field researcher, you can use this application to go out and catalog uh, tree growth or tree uh, foliage samples around areas, and then mark it with the GPS and take pictures of it and send it back to the system. So we built this application, the deposit handy app that we call it, uh, on top of this platform as a plugin. So the when I said it was plugins, we wanted to build this app on top of Posit. We built a quick prototype and Professor Mor Ralph Morelli and I went down to Haiti in March uh, for a few days to try this app out to see that you know we could actually work out in the field, there was enough you know, cell phone coverage, stuff like that we could use. Uh, and surprisingly, in the rural parts, you don't get running water and you don't get electricity, but you have full service in your phone. Come to the States, <laughs> it's, if you go into a building, you lose your cell service. So that was a plus. And we decided to build this app using SMS messages, send text messages back from the field back to the central office. Uh, it was built uh, using the Android platform, uh, Java, and uh, Java SDK development is done totally in Eclipse. And this past uh, July, we uh, took a team of students and us, and Professor Morelli and myself, we went down to Haiti to train and deploy the application for the staff there. So just a little bit on the technologies that we had to build this on. Uh, like I said, it's the Android SDK. Uh, we've used SQLite database for the phone and the server side. Uh, on the server side, we have a local database, and on the phone, there's an SQLite database as well. Uh, the existing database was a Microsoft server. We, even though we are open source, we do play nicely with Microsoft. <laughs> won't, uh, won't disallow them. Uh, so our application has an app that the data entry staff can connect and upload the information to the existing system. Um, we used uh, another open source program called Frontline SMS as a modem um, for our uh, SMS gateway. And that's just the usual Java string for the uh, graphics uh, API. Uh, just to give you an idea of the size of the program, uh, the past six weeks, the first six weeks of development this summer, between May and June, uh, the students who developed this added about 14,000 new lines of code on top of the existing code of Who was it? Team was six, six students. So uh, not all the development, but some of the documentation stuff we have to. Uh, so these are some of the challenges that we have. For like I said, this is a project that is being used in a very tough uh, field. Uh, so one, you know, one of the things to look at is the efficiency of the system. You're trying to do a distribution, manage a distribution here for 10,000 people or beneficiaries a month. Uh, at the sites you're talking about couple of hundred people coming to get food and you want to have something that won't be a bottleneck to processing it and getting the information done. Um, so you have to build something that they could use to write uh, uh, post updates on people and then give them the food and have them go out. The, another challenge was the actual amount of data that was being collected. We're talking text messages, right? 160 characters. You've got to squeeze in whatever information you have into a text message, 160 characters long, and shoot that back to the office. You also want to reduce the number of text messages that you send back and forth to keep the cost down, because you might be paying per text message. So you want to keep costs down, you want to clear the news, so you need to compress that information. Uh, the form that we're talking about is, I should have bought a sample form with me, but it's, it's like a two-page two document, say you're registering a new beneficiary, you would ask them 
the name, date of birth, uh, the children's names, um, alternate collector's ID, the father or someone else, uh, do you, are you receiving aid, what type of aid, are they malnourished, etc. All the information needs to be gathered and put into a record. This is just one quick sample of that. That we put all that information and then compressed it into the text message. Uh, we did some rough studies and managed to take the compression ratio of about 10 to 1 on the existing form. Information relay, as I mentioned, we want to get this information uh, quickly from the field. But, you know, take from a couple of weeks, we want to get it down to maybe a couple of hours at least. Uh, the cell signal, uh, like I said, there was cellular signal in the rural areas. In some parts, it wasn't quite, it wasn't uh, very stable. So you, for instance, we went to one of the clinics and we were testing the app. Uh, no parts, right? So we asked the nurse, uh, in my limited to no French, <laughs> I was trying to find out where there was cell service and she pointed to a tree. About 10, 15 feet away there was a tree. And so I was partly skeptical and confused, so I walked over the tree, three bars. <laughs> Apparently, anywhere around that clinic, there was no service, but you go out of this tree, which had a nice clear view of the valley, you got good cell service. So it's a spotty, but it's there. Um, so we had to design a system where the central server could acknowledge the messages as they came in from the field, so they didn't know which phone sent what, how many messages were sent, and then acknowledge that information back so the phone knows that it actually reached the uh, central office. Uh, and it's, it'll give you a leave a paper trail to, to show that these registrations or updates have been sent successfully. The, uh, another challenge when you're working on this is the education level of people you're working with. The users here are auxiliary nurses. They're educated, they can use stuff. Um, there was a concern that uh, uh, how adapt will they be at using smartphones? We start, we use a device. So, we were a little worried about that, but we found that they actually adapted to it quite well. And one or two of them were like, oh, Blackberry, this, is, this will work. And then they adapted to using the Android phones. Well, some of, them, some of the senior staff also, they have iPhones. So that means it's a problem. But we solved part of the training by uh, sort of a top-down development at the local level. So we train the staff there, the senior staff, in the application. Or they they were easy to pick it up in English. They were easy to train. And then they, in turn, trained some of the nurses and the agronomists in how to use the application. So that it was local uh, training that would be possible. Not external trainers that came in to try to show them how to use this program. Um, the, uh, and another challenge, you know, as I said, the, the language barrier, we had to localize the application. So the program, uh, I should have bought one of the phones. We have a different type of phone, but my phone has the app running on it. And it actually runs in, uh, the, you can see the text, but it's in Creole uh, and French and English the interface. It's multilingual. And it's designed that you can now add multiple languages on top of that and localize it to different regions if you want to. Uh, another challenge is just working with a remote client. Uh, in Haiti, so we have to work with them over Skype calls. Uh, sometimes the connection was spotty at times, so uh, and then you lose things in the translation. Like uh, so, we our French wasn't very good. We had a uh, student from uh, Montreal who was a go between sometimes speak French and then <coughs> members there spoke French, and then you'd hear conversations going on in French, and then something else is translated into English uh, or Haitian Creole. So that was an interesting challenge. Uh, there was an interesting quote from the uh, MIS manager down there, and he kept insisting, and it is true, you, you may have a, a technological solution to a problem, but that's not always the solution. You have to always take into account, as he said, it, it's the human factor. 
it's your end user. You're taking account who your end user is and how they're going to take to your application to 